Afternoon, Art Hostage here, and we're going to do another episode. Now, this is just an update on the Tyson Fury thing. There's two different opinions that are coming out. First of all, we got from Stephen Breen of the Irish Sun. Boxing champ Tyson Fury told he was banned from entering USA over involvement with Daniel Kinahan. Boxing star Tyson Fury was told he was banned from entering the United States owing to his involvement with Daniel Kinahan. The Irish Sun can reveal the two-time world champion was booked on a flight from Manchester Airport to New York's JFK Airport on Friday when he was told he was not permitted to fly. But... As he was about to board his flight, U.S. immigration officials informed him of their decision and outlined the reasons by mentioning Kenahan. Fury, who was travelling to the Big Apple, New York City, with three pals, accepted the decision and then left the airport. It is understood the boxer was travelling to the U.S. to meet with business associates. Hours after his refusal, he attended the fight of his cousin, Nathan Gorman, in Manchester. Well, that was in Liverpool, not Manchester, so they got that wrong. Following the fight, Fury did not take part in any interviews or make any comment on his cousin's victory. He's now the third member of Boxing World to be denied entry to the US after Matthew Macklin and trainer Ben Davidson were banned from flying in April. That the development also comes after boxing promoter Bob Arum claimed in May that the Gypsy King would not be prevented from flying because he had no business dealings with Kinahan. Arum said the people affected by these sanctions are those who had business dealings with Kinahan. But Tyson has publicly praised Kinahan on social media and stood alongside him during trips to Dubai. Meanwhile, Fury is keeping fit and healthy after revealing that he will... 100% return to the ring if pockets were big enough. The shock announcement came 53 days after he told fans his career was over. Tyson announced his retirement from the sport after a stunning knockout win over Dillian White in April. Rumours of a rematch with Usyk circulated after Tyson said he'd consider returning to boxing if the price was right. But when, he cha when, but when challenged on Piers Morgan uncensored on Wednesday night, he insisted he was finished and even offered to give the talk show host £1 million if he goes back on his word. Right, well, the first mistake they've definitely made is that um, the Gorman fight was in Liverpool, not Manchester. And now I'm wondering about this other thing, right, that he went to the airport and was told as they went aboard the flight with three of his friends... Um, that he wouldn't be allowed to go to the United States because of Kinahan, and then he accepted the decision and left the airport, and then went to Liverpool for the Gorman fight. That's what um, Stephen Breen is saying in the Sun. And now we go over to Nicola Talent, okay, and she said, right, Tyson Fury and former MT boxers booked US flights to test the waters after Kinahan crackdown. Earlier this week, Fury was denied entry to the US after his former fight fixer Daniel Kinahan was sanctioned by US authorities. Tyson Fury and other former MTK boxers and their teams have been booking flights to the US to test the waters to see if they can fly. The boxers are understood to be so flabbergasted by the sanctions against the Kinahan Mafia that they cannot believe that they have been caught up in a travel ban. Fury was refused entry to the US for the first time on Friday after he booked a flight from the UK. In a huge blow to his fighting career, he was informed he would not be granted entry stateside as he attempts to distance himself from the mob boss. Despite posting social media pictures of himself in Miami in recent days, Fury has not entered the US since his former fight fixer Daniel Kinahan was sanctioned by the US Treasury in, in April. Fury was informed on Friday evening that he was being denied access to the US in a story that broke on the Sunday on, on the Sundayworld.com. More than 600 people, including the world heavyweight champion, are on the banned list because of their direct association with drug boss 
Daniel Kinahan. The implications of the entry refusal for the boxers is likely to cost them hundreds of millions of dollars and is a clear message um, of the commitment of U US law enforcement to the takedown of the Kinahan organised crime group. Well, we're getting a bit of conflict in um, opinions there. I'm sure that if, if Tyson Fury and his three friends did go to Manchester Airport, and got turned down. There's got to be some kind of footage there. Someone, even members of the public, will have footage of him now. Okay. Or whether he just booked the flight and then they found out and they told him by phone call that he wouldn't be allowed on the flight. They're not getting their stories really straight, are they? And another thing I was wondering about, right, you know, normally when these things happen, the press, right, camp outside the people's houses, don't they? You know, why aren't the press all surrounding um, Tyson Fury's house? He's a heavyweight champion of the world. And why aren't the press, you know, like the paparazzi, why don't they do that? You know, I'm not saying they should do that. But normally when there's these kind of celebrity scandals or these kind of things like that, they the press are surround them, don't they, with paparazzi and everything like that. You know, and... Um, I'm just wondering why that hasn't happened. You know, I'm not saying it should, but I mean, you know, normally they they camp outside their house, don't they, with all the cameras and everything. You know, hoping to get a glimpse or get, you know, have you got anything to say about this? You know, we've seen it out of all of, you know, so-called celebrity stuff. They always do. So why are they not outside Tyson Fury's house? That's just one question. The other question is regarding Tyson Fury's four, uh, his tour. You know, the tour that he's meant to be going on. Well, it was meant to start, right, on Thursday or Friday, okay, um, in London. And then the next one was Carlisle. And then he's got a break until the 23rd when he picks it up again. Well, he didn't turn up in London for the uh, tour and he didn't turn up in Carlisle. So my first question is, all the people who paid their money, will they get their money back? And is the tour going to go ahead? The next um, date he's meant to be um, starting is the 23rd of, of uh, June which is four days' time. Well, you can go to his Instagram, Tyson Fury, and you can see, right, the advert for the um, tour, and you can see the dates. Well, all those people that have paid all that money for all them shows, will they get their money back? And if they do get their money back, will there be administration costs and everything? I don't know how much the tickets are. Let's just say they're £100. Will you have to pay 20 or £25 administration costs and all that? That's another scam. Okay, and if you go to um, Tyson Fury's um, Instagram page and you click on the thing that he releases every day, I think it's a little disc, his photograph. It shows you what he's been loading up and all that stuff. Well, he's loaded up one today because it's Father's Day with his father, right, um, John Fury, and they're sitting in the boat and he's smoking a big cigar and the music from Scarface, Al Pacino, Take It to the Limit, is playing in the background. And that, okay... Without a shadow of a doubt, and we'll all agree on that, that's a big fuck you to the Americans. Right? That is a fuck you to the Americans and the DEA and all the authorities in America because he's not, um, because Tyson Fury is now banned from going there. And he's throwing down the gauntlet to the National Crime Agency. You know, he's almost saying to them, come and get me if you think you got, you know, if you think you're hard enough. He's calling them out, the National Crime Agency. You know, come on then, you think that you can prove I'm um, an integral part of the Kinahan cartel? Yeah, we'll prove it then. Come on then. He's calling them on. Because the National Crime Agency will um, question all the Furies, but Tyson Fury in particular, under caution, and his father John, and his uncle Peter, and his cousins Huey, Tommy, and all of them. Right, but they're only going to be part of it. You know, and if uh, the authorities want to make a big splash of it or something, right, it'll be an operation with thousands of police officers all over the UK, Ireland, the US, um, Europe, the Middle East, right, and it'll be one of them ones that are breaking news. We're getting news of 5,000 or 3,000 police officers have raided 800 addresses all over the world, and they've taken in three, 400 people in, and amongst them will be... Tyson Fury, the Fury family, there'd be all the boxers, all the promoters, you know, the trainers, everything, right across the card. You know, that's if they want to make um, a big splash, 
you know, look, you know, sometimes they do, you know, um, you know, just because they're on the authority side, don't mean that they don't like Hollywood, you know, because that's what it all is, really. And another thing is as well, Tyson Fury says he's doing a, a Netflix 10-part series. They're following him about. Well, were they with him at the hospital? It's not the hospital, sorry. At the airport, were Netflix filming Tyson Fury at Manchester Airport on Friday when he tried to go to, um, to the US, if that's true, and he got turned back away from the airport? Well, someone's going to leak some of that footage, isn't they? You know... But when this thing blows, right, as I said before, when this thing blows, it's going to really blow. You know, and what you've got to understand, right, in the Nicola Talent article, I mean, that's a really important thing that, you know, I'll read it to you. Okay. Um, Daniel Kinahan has laid down significant business and social partnerships in Dubai before he was named by the U.S. Treasury. He has befriended a member of the royal family and employed a number of influ influential Emiratis in his business. Well, there's a clue there. Not only has he befriended this member of the royal family, guaranteed, if not that member, but other people, they'll, like, they'll have blackmail material on them, whether it's a sex tape, whether it's taking drugs, whether it's bad mouth in other countries in the Middle East you know, saying that they're friends with the Saudis or they don't like the Saudis or MBS. Crown Prince, they might be saying gossip about him or bad-mouthing him or bad-mouthing the Iranians or whoever. They may be saying we've got a lovely relationship with Israel, have done for decades, or they may say we don't like the Israelis. You know, then, you know, you know there's some kind of stuff that, that Christy Kinahan, as savvy and clever as he is, right, I bet they've got loads of blackmail material over years. Right, and they collect it, not, you know, just in case they need to use it in the future as a bargaining chip. Because I said to you before, the biggest question is, is where is the Interpol red notice? Cause the, uh, because the UAE always react positively when they're given an Interpol red notice. Right, they arrest the subject of the Interpol red notice. They did it to Raphael Imperiali, Radouin Targi, Right, the Frenchman, the ghost, on a multi um, hundreds of millions of dollars worth of drugs, seventy million dollars, I think it was, and he'd been convicted. The Frenchman, the ghost, right, loads of other people, fraudsters, and all that. But what they need is the Interpol red notice. So my question's always been, why wasn't an Interpol red notice issued the day after the press conference in Dublin back in April? I think it was the eleventh, wasn't it, or the thirteenth? The eleventh, I think when they issued the sanctions on the Kinahan Organised Crime Group, the rewards, and all that stuff. The natural thing should have been the next morning a red notice is issued. They issued an international extradition warrant red notice on Sean McGovern on murder charges, but they should have issued them for all the Kinahans, because what would have happened, the UAE would have taken them into custody. Okay, and then there would have been an extradition battle for that, but it would have taken them off the street. So, you know, are they all sitting down together? In, um, are they all sitting down together in uh, um, Dubai at the, at the boardroom table and, and, and they're all planning these takedowns in Greece, in the Balkans, in South America? We've seen them all over the world. I mean, no one who follows any kind of crime, right? In history, have we seen such a big cluster of huge takedowns of major criminals, major drug routes disrupted, all the way from right at the top, producers in South America, across Europe, the Middle East, right, we've even got Mr. C, he's been arrested as well, the, the Chinese, you know, the um, one in Amsterdam, he, right, he's going to go to Australia, we've had Chen Chang Chuck, or what his name is, right, Chung Chuck or something, right, he's gone from Thailand to Australia, extradited, all of these things, normally you've had 10 years worth of law enforcement action, right, in 10 months. You know, this is this is taking down organised crime at warp speed. Right, you've only got to go through Google and you've only got to look at all the operations that have happened all over the world, okay, in the last sort of 10, 10 months, 8, 10 months, to wonder who's talking. Because this is not all down to Encro Chat, although some of it might be. Right, this is down to inside primary intelligence. 
Now, if the Kinnahans are sitting down, right, and, and they're saying, right, okay, well, we, we know we've got to face the music at some stage. So we're going to dismantle the global art um, and drug cartels with all what they know. You know, and the fact is, you know, as I said before, right, all the people, all these people like Tyson Fury and all these, um, Bob Arum, um, Frank Warren, Eddie Hearn, all of those people, right, they dropped their guard, right, because they thought that the Kinahan cartel was invincible because they had the backing of MI6 to do with the terrorism and the laundering money for Hezbollah and Iran and all that game. But that, but that support, right, is not, um, that support is negated. As soon as the Americans got involved, as soon as the US came in, OFAC, the financial arm of the US Treasury, right, any support from MI6, right, well, they had to withdraw it. Well, and, and on the way out, you know, has there been some kind of deal being made? That's the, these are questions, legitimate questions that need to be answered. Okay, and we're entitled to do that. I mean, if you look, today we've had two different opinions from the Irish Sun and the Sunday World of what actually went down with Tyson Fury. You know, and why are people asking him the questions? You know, and um, Frank Warren dodged it um, um, last night or the night before. He dodged a question. He went, I've heard nothing about it. Yeah, really, Frank, yeah. Well, Frank Warren was turned down, right, the week before with it, when his fighter, Dubot, was fighting in New York or was fighting in America for that for that version of the heavyweight thing. So Frank Warren knows he's already on the, the ban list and they're all playing games. But today, that's quite interesting, right? Instead of sort of keeping his head down, happy Father's Day from Tyson Fury to his father, John, to the sound of pushing it to the limit from Al Pacino, Scarface, Cocaine, Daniel Kinahan, right? You know what I mean? It's a big fuck you to the DEA and the National Crime Agency. Well, the, well, the question is, how are they going to react? That's what I'm interested in. You know? And are they going to make a big thing of it? Are they going to make it a big public arrest of Tyson Fury? Or are they just going to speak to his lawyers and say, can you quietly come in? But wh whichever way it happens, mark my words, right? They're all going to be questioned, right, under caution. Because I've already identified, right, um, that they've broken the 2002 Proceeds of Crime Act in the UK on numerous occasions, right across the board. Not least the 50 people who got the MTK Hugh Block watches. So anyway, right, um, this is um, Art Hostage episode, right, um, Tyson Fury. Okay, um, the other episode that I've done, 173, is, I've been having trouble loading it up because it's a long one. It's like 42 minutes. So I've done this one in case, right, I can't do something with the other one. So you might get double bubble. So you, if this one will be 174, but I'll be going over the same ground. Well, it don't matter. We can always do that, can't we? And I hope you'll forgive me for that. Anyway, happy Father's Day to everyone out there. And it's Father's Day in the UK and in France. So to all the British fathers and all the French fathers, all the new fathers, okay, happy Father's Day. Art hostage over and out.